All right, and good evening. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin. We'll wait for a few more folks to hop on here so we can give you a little bit more in-depth look at the latest on Hurricane Delta. Uh, nothing extraordinarily different with the new information. Hurricane hunters are currently in the storm. Looks like they were able to find winds of about 90 miles an hour, not a dramatic change. Again, some expected strengthening was to occur as the storm is back over warm water. And so it's not a surprise to see it begin strengthening already. And luckily, not a rapid intensification so far. We'll see what happens as we continue through the night and on to, to into tomorrow. We should, now that the storm is in the Gulf, it has been since earlier today, get uh, more answers to those questions that are still hanging over us with the uh, track, uh, the intensity, uh, building up to landfall. Again, there's still some question marks because uh, what is kind of an interesting scenario that we're under is there are still very cool waters along the Gulf Coast. And so what we're likely to see is that the storm will strengthen and then weaken before landfall. How much weaker? When does that weakening occur? How strong does it get before that weakening occurs are all still very much unknowns at this time. And will probably, uh, unfortunately, remain questions up until the time that they actually occur. As we have seen from the storm, it was completely um, unforecasted for that rapid intensification. There were some signs that we could see this intensify to a major hurricane, didn't know it was gonna uh, happen so fast. And then remember within about uh, eight hours or so of landfall, all indications were that the storm would continue to intensify up to Cancun. And that did not happen. In fact, it weakened dramatically. Matter of fact, winds were forecasted to be at 155 miles an hour off the coast of Cancun, which would have been on the cusp of a Category 5. The winds were about 105 miles an hour. That is 50 mile per hour difference in the wind. So the Hurricane Hunter or the Hurricane Center says all the time the intensity forecast is far less reliable than the track forecast. And the track forecast, we have really started to see more consensus with the computer model. So we're beginning to see more of that agreement for a long period of time. Just because they agree at one time doesn't mean they will continue to do so. You want to see if there's some consistency, and there now has been some consistency as well as agreement with the models. And so, as I mentioned before, not quite written in stone just yet, but the hammer and chisel are definitely out to start chiseling in that forecast in terms of a certainty between New Iberia and Lake Charles as still a very strong hurricane. So let's kind of bring you um, a little bit more detail on what we're looking at right now. So hurricane hunters are in the storm right now, did find winds of 90 miles an hour. It is still a category one. Pressure has come down and that forward motion, that's what we like to see, still moving pretty quickly northwest at 17 miles an hour. That new little burst of convection where the center is, again, not a surprise we were expecting as it is over very warm water in the southern Gulf. We would expect to see some intensification. And at the moment, there really isn't anything in the upper atmosphere to hinder that development. However, that is going to change. Again, this is the same track we've been showing you since 4 o'clock. This isn't going to change until 10 o'clock. Forecast is calling for it to become a Category 2 and then a 3 briefly, it'd be a low end three, but that is still a major hurricane as we get into Friday. And notice during the day Thursday is when we are expecting this more northerly motion of the storm. Exactly when that turn occurs is going to be key to the eventual landfall. And then as we continue on Friday, still a category three, eventually making a little bit of an adjustment almost uh, north, northeast as it moves toward the Louisiana coast. Again, if it starts turning north and then just moves due north, it may be right along the Sabine River if it uh, makes uh, no turn north at all and keeps more northwest or north-northwest, then maybe more toward the Beaumont, Galveston, Houston area. We have sister stations in those areas, and they're all, believe me, on their guard right now for this storm to make a trek toward them. Again, that is still very much a possibility. It would be a strong Category 2 storm making landfall. And again, the impacts of Louisiana are start, southeast Louisiana are starting to come into better focus. Here's what's going on right now. As you look off to the east of the storm, we have this big upper level, right there, right there, this big upper level low, also a big upper level high. It's the high that is pushing the storm along. Now, eventually, it almost think of it as a big clock. Eventually, it's going to move past 7 and 8 o'clock and get to around 9 o'clock which means the storm begins moving north just because it's on the western rim 
of this upper high. Now, as it starts moving north, we then start to see some influences from this upper trough that is over Texas. That, too, is going to start drawing the storm north and also make the storm turn more northeast. But what's this upper trough also associated with? Dry air as well as wind shear. So what does this dry air, what does this wind shear do once the storm gets more into the western Gulf of Mexico? All things that would lead to a weakening of the storm. Not only that, this dry air would help to kind of weaken the storm by getting pulled into the center, kind of disrupting that circulation. But it also tends to kind of cut off a lot of that heavy rainfall. And if we can get that drier air more over us, our rain coverage and rain intensity and accumulation is going to be far less. And that is what the computer models seem to have been indicating with our rainfall accumulation far, far lower. It is still, as I mentioned, over very warm water, and its track is going to keep it over very warm water. But this isn't nearly, one, as warm as it was in the northwestern Caribbean, and two, you don't have that deep warm water like you did in the northwestern Caribbean. And there is a little pocket that the storm is going to be moving over that is uh, not exactly shallow, but there is a bit of a depth to that warm water. That is not the case though in the northern Gulf of Mexico. So it gets into cooler water. It gets into fairly shallow water. It also gets inundated with dry air and wind shear at this point. So this is when it's actually kind of interesting. This is when these colors on the track, I changed the colors to indicate the strength of the storm. So up until this point, it's a category one. Up to this point, it's a category two. At probably one of the Worst times for strengthening, the Hurricane Center is saying that it would become a Category 3. This will be something very interesting to watch because, in my opinion, a kind of this window here is when we would probably see the least likelihood of any intensification. That's when the Hurricane Center is saying that it's become a 3. These folks are experts, and I'm not downplaying anything that they say, but, again, their forecasts are not written in stone, and science is a field where you are allowed some um, argument and disagreement. And there may be a little bit of a disagreement on my end for maybe that strengthening to a three. We will see. The winds, though, as I mentioned, storm surge, but also the winds are going to be a bit of an issue. We're expecting the wind field to begin to expand in size. It's pretty small right now, but as the storm nears the Louisiana coastline, there is going to be a chance of these yellow colors, tropical storm force winds, to affect parts of our coast, parts of the metro area, river parishes, uh, uh, Florida parishes, North Shore, maybe not quite uh, all of St. Tammany or Washington, and certainly not uh, the Mississippi coast, but a chance for some very strong damaging winds. These would be in winds of excess of tropical storm force. So I would guess to say more 40 to 50 with some higher gusts, but you don't, it doesn't take much uh, for winds to knock down some trees create some power outages, and that may be more of a widespread issue as we get into late Friday and Saturday. Also, the coastal flooding, because we are looking at storm surge levels of three to five feet in Lake Pontchartrain, Lake Maurepas, but that would flood Lakeshore Drive on the South Shore and the North Shore, as well as perhaps inundate parts of the river parishes. Four to six feet elsewhere across most of the Southeast Louisiana coastline, and then notice from Terrebonne Parish to Terrebonne Bay up toward Vermilion Bay, 7 to 11 feet. That's where we're expecting most for southeast Louisiana to experience that storm surge. So lower Terrebonne, uh, south of Morgan City and St. Mary Parish as you head toward Vermilion Bay. So that's where we're expecting some of the highest storm surge from the storm. Models are starting to come into a little bit more in agreement. And again, it was really the Euro that picked up on that westward track uh, trend of the models. And then the uh, GFS kind of jumping onto that today. Also notice I wanted to show you this to give you an idea of where the heaviest rainfall is going to be. Near the center, southeast Louisiana is not really going to see much in the way of the heavier rain. So most of the models are calling for one to two, two to three inches of rain, maybe some higher amounts as you get toward Baton Rouge. So more of the western Florida parishes and perhaps even the river parishes, kind of this um, deep purpley color. I'm telling red color, so I don't know what this deep purpley color is called. Uh, but we're looking at, you know, kind of, uh, three, maybe four inches of rainfall in those areas, two to six, we're saying kind of in a wide area from the river parishes, almost to Lafayette. And then obviously between Lake Charles and Lafayette, you're looking at that uh, more swath 
of heavier rainfall totals. So as far as rainfall totals go, we are not looking at anything that's going to cause widespread flooding, aside from maybe some minor localized flooding. I think that's about as bad as it's going to get. Our computer model indicating as we head into the day tomorrow, some spotty showers moving through early in the day, maybe becoming a bit more scattered to numerous later in the day. And then obviously most of our rainfall with some of those bands moving in by Friday and on into early Saturday. That's also as the storm moves northward. Once we get more into the northeastern quadrant of the storm, we are going to see that risk for tornadic storms. So That'll be something that we watch for as a threat for Friday, a little bit later in the day as the storm gets closer to making landfall and then into early Saturday. So Friday night, early Saturday morning will probably be our greatest risk of any kind of tornadic storm. Don't think we're going to see anything widespread, but that will be something that we watch for uh, very, very closely. So uh, that's about it for the seven o'clock advisory. Again, as we now have the storm in the Gulf and we're finally beginning to see a little bit more detail of uh, what the models are grabbing onto. We're starting to see that that one forward speed has not changed. We are starting to see some intensification of the storm. How far that intensity goes is still very much a question. Uh, again, just kind of base it on a, a, a conglomeration of computer models, and that's basically what the Hurricane Center does, which is why they're going with a Category 2 to a low end 3 for a brief period of time before making landfall in Louisiana on Friday afternoon. At the moment, it looks like the impacts of Southeast Louisiana, as far as the main threats, it would be the storm surge, so coastal flooding, and these are gonna be areas outside of our levy, uh, the risk reduction system, as well as the winds. We may for a period see tropical storm force winds sustained of 40 to 50 miles an hour with some higher gusts, and that could cause some tree limbs, power outages across much of the area. So that may be our two greatest concerns with third being rainfall, and that really isn't as much of a concern as it is more of just a nuisance as you get these landfalling storms. And then also want to add in there the risk of some, uh, again, weak, short-lived tornadoes uh, later on Friday and into Saturday. So that's the update as of right now. Again, we were going to have a, we will have a complete uh, new forecast from the Hurricane Center and new coordinates uh, as of the 10 o'clock advisory. And we'll be monitoring monitoring this very closely for folks. Just wanted to see if I hope I answered everyone's uh, question. A lot of folks asking um, <laughs> uh, asking about uh, questions. Uh, someone asked uh, asked about the chances of it moving east. That really does not look likely at this time. Again, west of Vermilion Bay, maybe a little bit one way or the other, but. I think the models are really starting to hone in on that being the landfall, and I don't foresee it dramatically changing. Again, the question really, I, uh, not east, it's going to be when does the storm make any kind of a turn toward the north? Uh, that will affect who really gets the brunt of the storm in terms of a landfalling storm. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't look like that turn is going to come in until later on Thursday. So really within the next 24 hours, we will have been able to nail down that landfall. And I know a lot of folks may be joking, well, of course, less than 24 hours from landfall, you know where it's going to make landfall. But that really is the nature of these tropical systems. You don't really know anything for certain. And I would say certain being more of a 90% or higher uh, certainty. You don't really know that until the very short range part of the forecast, because there are just so many uh, variables and unknowns with tropical systems, really with weather in general, but more than anything with tropical systems, uh, that there really is never a time that you feel 100% certain on this forecast. I can feel better about it. I can feel more certain. But to say a guaranteed forecast, um, anybody that says that doesn't know what the heck they're talking about, because there is at no time in tropical forecasting that 100% uh, certainty that you're ever going to feel. So I'd say my certainty is 90% that we're not going to see any kind of an eastward motion. The question is going to be how far east is it able to even get before moving inland? Again, I'm still kind of eyeing more of the Lake Charles area than anything as a potential landfall, maybe from Lake Charles to New Iberia, really where the Hurricane Center is saying right now, which is why I don't think we're going to see any more of a uh, dramatic change uh, in that forecast from the Hurricane Center. Again, we'll know more, maybe some minor adjustments tomorrow, but certainly by tomorrow, if it starts making that turn, we'll know more uh, for certain. A lot of folks, um, uh, friends of mine, former schoolmates of mine, Angel, uh, Mike, 
son is excited that uh, he's hearing all the words uh, it, that I'm saying now that he's learning about in school. I'm a science nerd. I love that. Uh, my friend Mike would like to complain about me interrupting Big Brother. I tried to keep it brief for my 7, uh, 7 o'clock advisory. Um, college buddies that I went to school uh, in meteorology with, uh, thank you, appreciate it. Lots of folks watching, gotta have hurricane snacks. Um, I'm going more for hurricane booze at this time. I don't need any more hurricane snacks. I just need to relax at night. And, and again, it, it does look like this is not gonna be a, a big deal for Southeast Louisiana. Certainly some impacts. Uh, certainly you feel for our coastal communities and you feel for areas of Southwest Louisiana that had already gone through Laura. This is not gonna be a Laura, but these are areas that are still recovering right now and are gonna be uh, recovering for, as we know from Katrina, for a long period of time. And, and you certainly feel for those folks, but you know, first and foremost, we kind of have to look out for our neighbors, our viewers, our friends locally. And that's why we don't wish these storms, best case scenario, this thing dissipates in the Gulf of Mexico and we're done with it. Doesn't look like that's gonna happen. So we just wish these, to move away from us, not that we wish it on anyone. Be great if it made a turn out into the Caribbean, gets into the Atlantic and dissipates, but that too is not going to happen. So we just have to take these, you know, as they come. Again, a lot of folks keep saying that this was a stressful hurricane season, uh, and it definitely was with uh, now being under six cones of error. This season is just incredible. However, six near misses. We really could have been far worse off than we were this season. Yeah, we were under the gun six times, but that was six times that we really did avoid being nailed hard from what we know can be devastating weather. And again, we don't wish this on anyone, but we're certainly glad that it is looking as though this is not gonna be an issue for us. As I mentioned, I keep rambling on here. I wanna go eat some dinner. So we're gonna, uh, again, do another update on air, Eyewitness News at 10 for a uh, complete uh, look at uh, not only the advisory, but a forecasted uh, track uh, from the, does it say track and crystal ball? Oh, well, I'll be, who built these graphics? I'm not tracking crystal ball, I'm tracking the tropics. I don't even know how this Facebook thing works, I apologize. A few folks, and I said, what are you talking about crystal ball? And I looked at the graph. Folks, I don't know what I'm doing anymore, and I'm definitely punch drunk at this point in the season, so I'm ready for mid-October. Hey, good news is it does look like a fairly strong cold front will be moving through on Monday. So we'll wrap things up for now, and I'll see you back on Eyewitness News at 10. Oh, I turn this off.